Uh, Malmö University uh, is situated in Malmö, uh, the third city of Sweden, that is in the very, very south of Sweden. Uh, we are connected via a bridge to Copenhagen. So this is really a sort of a very sort of connected region between Sweden and Denmark. Uh, and this has been also sort of an interesting connection uh, with respect to Caucasus studies because Caucasus studies has really emerged as a cooperation between uh, researchers here at Man University, Lund University, that is just close by, uh, and Copenhagen University. Uh, and actually some of uh, the lectures here at Caucasus Studies are based in, in Denmark, in, in Copenhagen. So for those of you who are here in the studio, you know that Copenhagen is so close and so sort of important to us. Uh, all right, so Man University uh, is a young university, it was founded well, approximately 15 years ago. I think the most sort of characteristic feature of this university is that it is multidisciplinary. So in all our activities, we are bringing together uh, specialists from different disciplines. And we have also a special focus on uh, what is uh, important for society. I think most people who are working here have a very sort of uh, intense engagement for uh, process in society that we should sort of connect. If you look at the faculties at the university, uh, we are now at the faculty of culture and society. Uh, other faculties uh, that we can mention here is learning and society, learning and society. We have um, health and society uh, and science and society. So this really is our, our profile. Culture and society is our faculty and we have different, also really multidisciplinary uh, programs and courses that are offered here. Some of you already study um, at these courses. For instance, uh, we have a program on um, European studies, which is also an area studies program that is close to us, so to speak. We have international relations, uh, peace and conflict studies, uh, human rights, gender studies, and um, several other um, multidisciplinary educations. So this is the, the corpus of studies. And what is sort of special about our courses is that we are uh, offering them online. It's not the only online uh, program or course at one university, but that is sort of our, uh, our profile uh, to, uh, to, do, to try to do everything uh, online and to bring together students from many different countries. Um, we have uh, an other sort of international group of uh, lecturers that are working on uh, Caucasus studies, as I already mentioned, and we are also sort of geographically <laughs> found in, in different places. But today uh, we are in the same place, <laughs> some of us at least. Uh, and um, we will have a presentation by uh, Nathalie Zamainuson that you know already, I think, from interactions. And uh, Manana Kobaidze is our lecturer on, uh, on Georgian. And she's just uh, sitting now uh, close to the Skype computer. So when you send your Skype messages, uh, you will contact with with Manana. Uh, so I think I will uh, stop talking about uh, my university now and uh, give the floor to to Matalisa. You can perhaps say a few words about yourself. Yes, I will start with say <coughs> a few uh, words about myself and then I give the floor to you. Okay. And to Manana. Uh, um, 
yes, my name is Meta Lisa Magnusson. Maybe I should be polite and stand up. Uh, Meta Lisa Magnusson. Uh, yeah, maybe you know the, the presentation. Uh, the presentation already. At, we have this side on the Facebook. Uh, and um, I am one together with Karina. Uh, Wamling and Manana. You can't see Manana yet, but you will get the possibility to see her. Uh, I'm one of uh, uh, the founding mothers of this uh, Caucasus Studies uh, course at Malmö University. Uh, we started, Karina and, uh, and uh, Manana actually started already in 19, uh, 2005, and I joined you in 2006. Uh, and um, uh, we are proceeding well, and we are happy to uh, to uh, start a new semester here with uh, a new group of students. Uh, first, in uh, well, we, you have already started the introduction, and uh, later on you will work together with me uh, uh, at the history of the Caucasus uh, module and also post-Soviet development. Uh, and if some of you also will continue with Corpus of Studies too, you will have the opportunity to meet me again in two courses, Conflict and Conflict Resolution in the Caucasus, as well as State and Nation Building in the Caucasus. Um, my, so to say, legitimacy for being in this subject, Caucasus studies, is uh, via my studies of Russia. Uh, I am a PhD in Slavonic languages with focus on Russia. And besides Russian language and literature, I have studied Russian and Soviet uh, history and Russian culture. Uh, and um, uh, the Caucasus region, uh, both the South Caucasus and North Caucasus uh, uh, has since I uh, have since well at least the beginning of the 19th century been a part of the Russian Empire and after that the Soviet Union. Uh, today the North Caucasus is still a part of the Russian Federation, the post-Soviet Russia. Uh, however, the South Caucasus uh, now comprises three independent states, Armenia, Georgia, and Azerbaijan. Uh, and uh, uh, Russia is not the only actor. Russia is the most, in, uh, is, the key, is one key external ex, uh, uh, actor in the Caucasus, uh, but there are also others, Turkey and uh, Iran. And in, uh, in our course, you will also meet people with which approach the Caucasus region uh, also from this angle. Uh, so I am not going to say uh, uh, so much more about myself, uh, except that my, per uh, my research interest and, uh, and my special interest in the Caucasus are related to state and nation building pro problems, especially uh, the secessionist, the violent secessionist conflicts, which there are uh, uh, quite a few uh, examples of in the Caucasus, Chechnya, Russia, Abkhazia, Georgia, South Ossetia, Georgia, Nagorno Karabakh, Azerbaijan. Uh, hello again. Uh, my name is Manana Kotkobaidze. Uh, I am happy to be with this uh, group, Caucasus Studies, and participate as a teacher uh, of Georgian language. So we have decided to offer this opportunity to our students and give them the yeah, possibility to learn some Caucasian languages or maybe some other languages that Maybe they're not Caucasian, but you can use it in Caucasus. In the Caucasus. So, um, as Marta Lisa has already said, we started some years ago, maybe 10 years ago, or 
before. Yeah. The Georgian language is online course. Mm. Now we have Caucasian studies, and we have uh, Georgian language and Russian language, and we have even Chechen language. So students have a choice to choose any language of Caucasus. So we are looking forward to working with you, and we are very happy to have you here. Now. So we hope that we will follow our plans and we will finish this course successfully. So that's it. Thank you. I'll uh, get the opportunity to uh, see our other lecturers. Uh, I would just like to mention their names and their main profiles. Uh, so we have uh, Lars von Hansen, who is uh, in Copenhagen, and he is a specialist on uh, the North Caucasus. Uh, he is working on uh, uh, the Circassians. Perhaps you've not heard the, the name yet, but when you we were working on, on this introductory course as well, uh, you will know that we have a specialist on the Circassians. Um, uh, we have also Sermon Tyson, another Danish uh, scholar who is uh, specialized in uh, the Caucasus and uh, Persia or Iran, so that is sort of the southern perspective. And he's a historian and he will join us for uh, the module History of the Caucasus. And we also have Nina Dadalauri, uh, who is finished this part to say a few words about myself. Uh, like Metalisa and I think many of the people who are who have been sort of interested in in the Caucasus for a long time, started uh, doing uh, studying Russian. Uh, as in in the old times, uh, the Caucasus was a part of the Soviet Union, of course. So uh, it was a natural thing to be interested in a part of the Soviet Union at that time. So I also started doing Russian. Uh, and Russian and linguistics, general linguistics, were my subjects when I studied at university. Uh, I discovered that uh, the Caucasus region is so fascinating from the from the point of view of all the uh, diverse ethnic and linguistic groups. So I sort of started to to focus on that. And in my dissertation, I worked on on Georgian. Uh, I spent uh, a couple of years in Georgia at the very end of the Soviet period, so it was really interesting to follow the sort of the collapse of the Soviet Union, sort of from inside and from one of the sort of the, the corners of, of the Soviet uh, Union at that time. Uh, I've, I've sort of continued to work on different aspects connected with uh, with the Caucasus, with different uh, different groups, both in uh, the South Caucasus and. Uh, in uh, the North Caucasus. Uh, we will meet in different um, modules during uh, Caucasus studies. I'm involved in introduction to Caucasus studies uh, in the Russian language part uh, and also if you continue to, to follow Caucasus studies too that we will offer in the fall. Hope to see you then. Uh, in one of the modules that is called Peoples and Languages of the Caucasus. Okay, I will stop there, and uh, I think really it's it's time to uh, get you as get the opportunity for you as students to say a few words about about yourself now when you're when you're here. Um, it's Cosmos. Hmm? Cosmos. You're okay uh, from Istanbul. Um, I've uh, already graduated. Um, I studied English, uh, English studies in Mama University, and, um, and I'm interested in uh, taking this course now. Um, so I'm really looking forward, forward to it to begin. <laughs> Great. Thank you. What about the Skype connection, uh, Manana? Do we have any any questions we, or comments from the Skype? We have about uh, ten students online. Uh, uh, so far, they asked about 
external actors. So someone didn't couldn't hear if it was Turkey, mm -hmm. Russia, and then I said that it was Iran. Maybe she will ask about. Yeah, I met. I met Iran. Iran. Yeah, but, I uh, so far we haven't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mentioned uh, uh, the uh, Russia, Turkey, and Iran, Iran. or Persia. Mm -hmm. Those are, so to say, historical um, uh, external actors mm -hmm. uh, competing for influence in the Caucasus. Uh, but today, in addition, we have also, as external actors, competing for influ influence in the Caucasus, the United States, European Union. And some also talk about China, but I think it's too, e uh, too early to talk about that, to include China right now. Revas, perhaps you can just say a few words about yourself. Hi, my name is Revas Shantoure. I'm from Georgia. I'm Georgian. And uh, I'm a linguist. Uh, I'm working in Caucasian languages, especially Kartwellian languages. Uh, I participated together with Karina Malik and Manana Kokoparidze to create it. Two courses, online courses, uh, Georgian and Russian, one. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we have a question here okay. uh, from you. Helena. What about literature for the Russian course? Uh, this is the question. What okay, I think that is the question that I should answer. Uh, the literature for the Russian course is uh, we publish uh, lecture materials, that is the, the course material um, that is offered, so you will not need to um, to get any additional information. Uh, when you get into the course uh, a little bit further, because now we are more dealing with uh, the Russian alphabet, uh, we will also publish some sort of more sort of reference material that you can use as a complement to to the lectures. But you will get everything, all the links, all the information in the lectures. Um, there is a new question about external actors again. Uh, this, uh, is this new interest related with the natural resources or more related with the geostrategic position of the Caucasus? Both. Both. Okay. So, uh, uh, these uh, these questions are very interesting, but uh, they will you will get extensive opportunity to discuss them and study study and discuss them in the course, uh, uh, both in the uh, at the end of the introduction course where we we'll have special uh, special lectures on uh, uh, on um, the geopolitics. Of, uh, or rather on the Caucasus and also in the history of the Caucasus and later on in Caucasus too. So you, uh, uh, if we start a discussion on, uh, uh, on uh, these issues already now, uh, although the, these are very, very interesting issues, uh, it will take us very far. But uh, uh, preliminarily, I'm oh, a <laughs> difficult one. I can say, yes, this new interest is related both to, uh, uh, to, uh, 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 to the strategic uh, natural uh, resources located in the Caspian region and beyond in Central Asia, as well as the transportation of these uh, strategic uh, um, resources from the region to the outside. Um, but this new re uh, interest is also, of course, related to uh, geopolitical rivalry, which is connected also to uh, the uh, to the com uh, competition on uh, control over the energy resources. Uh, you will have the opportunity uh, to have this kind of sort of. Uh, live discussions further on also during uh, the semester because we are we plan to have uh, three uh, more web seminars 
where we uh, invite uh, international scholars that will join us uh, for, for web seminars. Um, we have uh, an American professor who has been <coughs> working uh, for a very long time on, on the Caucasus, uh, and a professor from uh, Azerbaijan, from Baku, and a scholar in uh, Georgia, an international scholar based in, in Georgia. So we will have three uh, web seminars to look forward to, where we will have the opportunity to have uh, live uh, discussions of Okay. Uh, well, my name is Cosmos. I'm from uh, Nigeria. Uh, I live in Sweden and I study international relations. And um, this is my uh, first semester studying CACAS, of which uh, I'm really looking forward to really know much about the CACASs. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, we're very happy to have a visiting professor from uh, Tbilisi State University and we have invited him to come uh, today to say hello to you. So uh, could you just come over? And I think it's better to come over here and just uh, say a few words. Uh, so welcome uh, Professor uh, Alexander Kuchanice from Tbilisi State University. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Alexander from Georgia. I'm teaching uh, political science in Tbilisi State University and some courses which are quite specific uh, political corruption and organized crime. I'm working on security issues. Last year I was here at Malmö University and made some several presentations on post-Soviet developments in the Caucasus. Uh, not only reading theoretical literature, I was born and grew up in Georgia since Soviet time. As old Soviet man, I saw the Soviet Union, its collapse, uh, horrible 90s in Georgia, and then development in after 2003. Now Georgia is in quite uh, interesting situation. There are two uh, trends uh, fighting each other, pro-Western and pro-Russian, I would say. And uh, Georgia is again on the crossroads. And of course, uh, we don't mean, I don't mean not only Georgia, I mean the whole Caucasus. Those we should take into account that uh, connection between Turkey and Azerbaijan with Central Asia goes by Georgia. As well as uh, Russia was always connected to Armenia by Georgia. Those after the war in 2008, it connects now via Caspian, Iran to Armenia. I mean, military supplies. Situation is changing and who knows, perhaps Russia again will start its communications, led communications by, with Armenia by Georgia. There are many problems, interesting problems, which are a question of interest not only for Georgia or Armenia, Azerbaijan. Uh, a lot of strategic interests are overlapped here, Russian, Iranian, Turkish, European Union, uh, United States and Chinese too. So I think this region is very interesting from strategic point of view. I mean, not only uh, oil and gas, geopolitics, and also um, Georgia is one of examples uh, where it will go to the West or will remain part of Russian uh, empire or influence. If this question is open. I'm here to help this program. Uh, I will do maximum what I can. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to add uh, uh, a few words to what um, uh, Sasha said. Um, as you understand, uh, I think we would like to underline that in our courses we are uh, we very much would like to combine theory with 
entry. Now, uh, uh, studying this region with the help of written sources, literature, reference books, and so forth. But also, uh, uh, but also we want to bring you as so close as possible also to the realities, to the empery of this region. And therefore, we think it's very valuable that we have uh, 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 that we have competent, interesting, uh, knowing people from the region who's working together with us. As for instance, uh, Professor Alexander Kuzianitz. Uh, uh, and also, the staff working with this course, uh, Karina Wamling, Manana, and I, we have uh, extended. Uh, well, Manana is born in the Caucasus, uh, in, in Georgia. Uh, Karina and Rivas, uh, they have lived in in uh, in, in Georgia, uh, and uh, travelled extensively in the regions. And uh, me myself, I have travelled. I have led uh, studying tours to the Russia, and I have the privilege, if I may say so. Uh, the opportunity to do this in one of the most uh, fascinating periods in uh, the history of these regions, uh, uh, the 1990s, the, the first post-Soviet years of the, of the Russian Federation and the Caucasus. Uh, so we have traveled in the, uh, well, if I speak for my, me personally, I've traveled to Chechnya several times before, uh, before uh, the, the second world uh, before the end of the second war, which ended in 2002. Uh, so I experienced the independent, the so-called independent, the separatist uh, state, uh, Chechnya and Chechnya. I've been to Nagorno-Karabakh uh, and several other places in this region in uh, various times. Uh, and uh, I think also when uh, when uh, you read the presentations on. Focus of Study Students Facebook, if you can really feel that th this is really how most of the students also like to, to go about it. Uh, a couple of students are living in, in Georgia right now, and uh, people have traveled extensively, and uh, I think uh, I think we're quite, quite like that to the extent that we we're interested in the re this region from a both from a theoretical point of view, but we also want to be there and uh, to, to to study it in the sort of field research. I almost forgot uh, to mention a very important person, Catherine Peacock, our course administrator. Uh, she was supposed to be with us today, but she unfortunately had to go to another meeting, but she sends her regards to you, and uh, I think you, all of you have been sort of exchanging emails with her. And uh, uh, so, yes. hello from Catherine. Yes, she's a very important person, and you will yes. have extended contact mm. with her, because all questions we couldn't answer, yeah. we always ask you, ask, uh, ask Catherine. Yeah. <laughs> So Catherine, you, yeah. Yeah, so Catherine is connected with all the administrative yeah. systems, uh, which we are not. So in many cases, we can not help you because we are not sort of in these systems of LADOC and registrations and things like that. So. Uh, okay. May, may, yeah. So complicated to, to get things working uh, from a technical point of view. And I would also like to... There is one person in this room that haven't presented himself, and, but I would just like to to say that we have Mikael here, Runda, who is really, well, the spider in the web here, and who keeps everything together here, and without him and his, his help, we couldn't do these kind of seminars at all, because it's, it's really quite, quite complicated. So Mikael, you, you have, to, yeah, <laughs> you have to, to, to put the camera on yourself so the students can see okay. you. Hello. <laughs> uh, it's not so complicated, but uh, we try our best. Um, I don't know if I can um, if you can hear me, but anyway, on its learning you will see it has two links. And for those who have problems to see the the first stream, try the other ones because that is compiled and compressed quite hard, which means that you can see it with a very low bandwidth. Uh, that is my message. And and all uh, lectures are also recorded in these two modes, which means that if you have a 
modem uh, dial-up uh, connection in somewhere far away, you could also see the lectures. So um, don't worry about the technology. I would try to, to, to fix that as much as possible. Okay. Uh, no, it was really great to to see you, to communicate with you, and uh, we look forward to meeting you in different media uh, situations uh, during this this course. So, thank you all for participating, and uh, see you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Is that fence or something? Yeah. <laughs>